thank you everyone uh, coming to our meeting tonight July 26th uh, is there any additions or deletions of the minutes yes, did you Mr. Chairman I'd like to add an executive session on personal matters at the end at the end at the end of our meeting. Okay. I'll second that. But prior to uh, us going there, I think uh, it's only fitting that given the day of today that we uh, have a moment of silence and extend our sympathies to the Kennedy family. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Motion made seconded. Any further discussion on that motion? Hearing on all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Uh, approval of the July 12th minutes. So moved. Second. Is there any corrections or deletions before I ask for a vote? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Good commission, you have a uh, report. Just sent up short update. Um, roadside mowing continues. We've been doing ditch work and rip wrapping up on uh, Higher Road in Anderson Hill. On another note, I have bids. Uh, offers for the excavator that we're selling the Caterpillar 307 and I have two written ones right here that I can offer to the board to make Sit a decision up. if consider they would like to sell it for what we've been offered um, the first offer was uh, $12,600 And I had another offer of fifteen thousand. I had a third offer of twenty thousand. And the highest offer that I ended up with was twenty four thousand. So I don't know what the board's pleasure was to Mr. Chairman make the motion that we authorize the Road Commissioner to sell the excavator for $24,000. Second. Is there any further discussion? Do you have any further comments on it? Nope. All right. We'll stop. Uh, all right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So we want to put that on the, uh, on the website too so that people won't keep calling. Well, Take, oh, it, take, it take it off Craigslist. Yeah. Craigslist. Take it off Craigslist. Please. Craigslist. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Phone's been ringing a little bit. Has it been cash? Oh, my. <laughs> Hot <laughs> item. <laughs> That's why we can't get a hold of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. You have anything else? That's all I have right now. All right. Uh, approval of subboard warrants. They're floating and drifting. Have you had these? Anybody want to check them out? From right on yeah. yeah. Uh, guests, you guys just. I actually, I wish I'd been paying attention. I wish I'd been here at the last meeting to hear. I'm a little concerned about the Casella road traffic and. Um, <coughs> um, but from what I'm reading, it sounds like the traffic's not going to be impacted by the changes. That's our understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, can you add me to some kind of list of communication because I want to be abreast of that? Sure. And Are they looking to extend their hours? That's so right now they're proposed, which it was just brought to the board's attention last, last meeting as well. Yeah. Our understanding is currently they function from nine to three. Mm -hmm. Advertise seven to four Monday through Friday. That's I think pick up, but the, like the actual crusher runs. Yeah, but the tra I'm talking about the traffic because I walk that road a lot. And so we were we were told that there would be no traffic change, is what we've I'm been saying, told. They, they may crush at nine o'clock, but the traffic is there. Heavy and steady from correct. So the the amendment 
to their permit is only for the crusher operation. It's not to change any of the other hours that, that are currently in place. But they're going to have another... Oh, uh, There's hearing. a hearing coming up. And, okay, so I just want to make sure I'm abreast of that because that's... I mean, I'm just still interested because if they're increasing the, what they can crush, I mean, they, they have steady traffic, you know, every 10 minutes. Like, I would love to, if I had a life <laughs> or had time in my life to collect data, like, I mean, they, I, I hope that they are in compliance with what their restrictions are, but they, if I were to sit there in a chair and watch all the traffic, mm -hmm. you know. are going to open uh, down at the old Grange Hall. What the, what's the date of that? August 2nd at 10.30 um, in the morning at the Clarendon Community Center. They're having a follow-up meeting. Oh, okay, that's the next thing about this issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, that's right Both before Grange the elementary Hall. school. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, well, that's, fire. that's really why I'm here, because I just, you know, I'm a resident, and Clarendon has a lot of beautiful parts, and it's getting impacted and I, I feel like not a lot of people have kids in the area but mm -hmm. I don't want I want kids to be able to grow up with the same I mean I know it's gonna be different but you know I want them to be able to have a conversation with their neighbor sure. I can't just, even talk to the person across the road just for their record please say your name so that uh, sure uh, Karen Ames sure. I'm sorry I should have asked you that oh, no problem but yeah, our understanding, so that follow-up meeting is going to be a more more discussion with regards to the Act 250 hearing. And our, at least what we were told at the meeting, because John was here, mm -hmm. um, he said that the trucking, they're not proposing any changes to. It's supposed to stay as it is. It's only the operation of the crusher was the main change that they were proposing. So... Um, Karen, if I can get your information, I can give it to Casella if you want to be on those emails that they send out. Okay, yep. Um, sorry, I was sticking out. Sticking out. <laughs> Thank you, that was all I had. Okay. Um, John, do you have any public yeah, comment? Yeah, I do. Um, John McKenna, for anybody who doesn't know me, probably in the lot. <laughs> um, been reading and hearing a lot about uh, you know, some comments about the Mill River Unified Union School District and its forming and some comments have been made that are really not accurate and I wanted to just bring that to your attention and try and clear things up a little bit. Um, I was involved in that committee from the very beginning. I was one of the people who <coughs> I guess one of the architects of the bylaws and every th the foundation that built the district. And I was in every meeting. All those meetings, the agendas were published online, the minutes were posted online. Uh, there were several mailings that went out. There were uh, public information hearings that went out. There was information posted down here, including the, uh, I, don't, I didn't print everything out, I just got a few excerpts of things that I thought were pertinent to what was being said, but there was a whole report, final report that was issued. Um, and it went over the, the, I guess the starting point, the discussion, the topics that were discussed, the decisions that were made, and there was a copy of the bylaws that were attached to that as well. And I know those were posted at every town hall and in a variety of other places. So they were readily available. They were also on the district's website. And that, at that point, it was I think it was on each individual elementary school's website as well as the RSSU board's website. Um, there were some comments that the towns were all promised that tax, taxes would go down when in fact uh, as a result of the merger it was made clear to everybody that Shrewsbury and Tinmas taxes were actually going to go up but that the trade-off for them was that their small schools were better protected from being closed down. Um, all of us on the committee understood at the time that the only people talking about taxes going down or as a result of mergers were the legislators who created the law. And we looked at it extensively, and our business manager, Stan Palachik, who is a wizard with finances, basically came to the same conclusion that we did, that the only way that savings are going to be realized is if school buildings are closed and the kids are consolidated into um, other schools. So that was one of the big fears that Tinmouth and Shrewsbury had, was that their small schools were going to get closed. And truth be told, if Wallingford or Clarendon were in Chittenden County, we'd be the small school in the district. So there were a lot of things discussed about um, 
how that was going to affect people's taxes. Now, we ended up, what started all this was Act 46, which forced the consolidation of schools into bigger districts. Um, we actually merged under an earlier law, which was Act 153, which allowed for a lower pupil count because we wouldn't be able to meet the pupil count requirements under Act 46 without bringing in another town, which we did reach out to other towns, Middletown, um, um, Mahali, I think we even reached out to like West Rutland and some other towns to see what they, if they had any interest. And uh, at the time, nobody did. Mount Holly later regretted that, I think. But um, so that wasn't an option. Act 153 allowed us to merge under a smaller pupil count. And under Act 153, there were some tax incentives, which started at eight cents, an eight cent discount on the tax rate the first year, and then went down two cents a year every year after that until it basically went away. That was the only tax savings that was involved in this out of what's probably easily multi, I don't remember the numbers anymore, but we're talking <coughs> million dollar budgets once you combine all of them. The best we could come up with was about $370,000 in savings. And part of that was because the district, the RSSU prior to this point had already done a lot of the merger stuff that other districts had not. We'd merged special education under the RSSU. We'd merged transportation under the RSSU. Um, bargaining with teachers was done at all of the elementary school teachers were bargaining under one contract instead of separate ones. A lot of things that we were already doing prior to mergers. So without closing buildings, there wasn't going to be a lot of savings and it was never sold that way. Um, I have all kinds of information here that talks about, um, you know, I could read this verbatim if you want, but basically that's all that was promised was that $370,000 plus maybe a little bit of savings, um, like $13,000 on increased purchasing power. Again, multi-million dollar budget. We're not talking a huge percentage of anything. Um, what the merger did allow us to do was all of the employees in all of the schools became one single under one single employment entity. So it was easier to fill positions in the schools with people we already had rather than having to hire someone half a time at this school and half a time at that school as two separate jobs. Those people now had one full-time job under the new district. And there were all kinds of other things that, that were adv advantageous to us in this merger. The other thing to keep in mind is if we didn't do it, the state was going to do it to us. And there are a lot of districts out there that waited and found themselves getting merged with people that were not anywhere geographically close to them. So we decided to get on it early when we could take advantage of those tax incentives that were available because every year you delayed, you went down to the next tax. So if we'd done it a year later, our initial first year of tax re uh, rebate would have been six cents. So we got in it as quickly as we could to take advantage, as much advantage as we could of the tax savings that were available, but that was through the incentives through the state. And we never promised anybody that there were gonna be budget savings by merging. Um, the other thing that I have heard is that we snuck in the, um, the bit about selling the school buildings, um, that that wasn't, that, that the selling the school buildings from the town or the school district to the new union district was something that got snuck in. Um, Article 8 of the um, bylaws that were are all part of this document clearly says that no later than June 30th, the forming districts of the Mill River Union High School District 40 will convey to the new Union School District all their school related real and personal property for $1, and the new Union School District will assume all capital debt associated therewith. And that was published repeatedly, again, posted on in town halls, posted on the website mailed out to people. I even have a copy of the text of what was mailed to people if people want to see this. There was nothing snuck in. Every single thing that happened with forming that district was completely transparent, as transparent as we could be, from 
mailing stuff out to every household in all four towns plus probably half of West Rutland because some of us get our mail through West Rutland and we can't just chop it off we had to mail to everybody so nowhere on here does it say that your taxes are going to go down what's the date when I uh, I couldn't tell you. I'd have to go back to the file. I printed this out of my computer. I had a PDF of it, but it was 2016, I think, is when the vote happened, and this was in, I want to say, January. It was either 16 or 15, I can't remember, but this was, I believe this was mailed out in January of that, or at least the draft copy that I got in PDF form as part of the committee was, was the 27th, and then it was mailed out after that. I'm not going to speak for anybody else in town. Going to speak for me. I don't recall <coughs> seeing that notice now. Whether at that time Liz looked at it and didn't, you know, pass it on to me or let me know that she was on the Clarendon board at the time, so she would have been. It would have been old news to her, so that is possible. All right, but the uh, after we did some research in the records and stuff. Uh, a couple months ago, that's when Gloria uh, found it. Where I think you signed off on the elementary school, maybe for a dollar, uh, and and that was the first time I realized that all this took place. That was for me. Now I'm not speaking for anybody else. Um, so. But it also says on there that if the union is no more, then it goes right back to the, the community for that same dollar. Yes, sort of. It, it does say that if the district, um, in the event that the new district determines, this is, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, yeah. that any of the real property conveyed to it is or are unnecessary, uh, to the continued operation of the district or its education programs that shall convey such real property for the sum of one dollar uh, to the town in which it is located. In the event a town elects not to acquire ownership of such real property, the union district shall sell the property upon such terms and conditions, right. yada yada. Yeah. So yes, if the district decides that the building is no longer uh, useful to it, then and it's going to get rid of the school, get rid of the property, then the town would have right of first refusal, basically. We uh, um, have made copies of it, right? Didn't I give you handy? They were in a, in a folder in here somewhere. But that was, for me, I didn't even realize that that all took place. I was wondering, uh, you know, how the school board, for instance, became the uh, proprietors, is that a good term, of the <coughs> buildings down there, and I just thought, well, it's the school, and that's how it worked. I never realized that the, you know, the town signed off on all that stuff, but it, it well, was... The voters, the voters in, in approving the merger of the schools signed off on it. Okay. The school and the town, those entities, I mean, the school board in essence agreed with the concept, but it was the voters who ultimately signed off on it by voting in favor of merging. That's the fine print. That's the reality of how it works, yeah. yeah. But all that information was very available at the time. It hung right on that bulletin board on the other side of that wall <coughs> for quite a while. And there was, I know there was more than just this one mailing. We, we held hearings, we held, we had minutes posted and we talked about all this stuff it's all very open and transparent so no offense but if you didn't didn't realize it then you weren't taking advantage of the information that was available to you down at this point and also it's worth noting that the Vermont statutes right now as they stand as I remember them I haven't looked them up in a couple of years but if any school wants to withdraw from the district then town, you mean? Th yes if any town wants to to withdraw from the district the town has to vote to do that and then each individual town in the district has to vote to approve it as well That's 
the votes are not aggregated like they are with the budget. It's in each individual town has to vote to approve it. We didn't realize that until uh, I guess with Brian Collimore finally located that information in the state and then sent it down. And then what we did as a board uh, was um, to just, you know, we were checking with our legal advisors, our lawyer, as well as uh, leagues, Vermont leagues. And um, at one at one point, John Film, because we discussed it in open meeting, uh, that we said, well, you know, that's like, because I, I, we're on camera, I'm not, <laughs> my opinion, but I think that we said, well, going forward, let's just see where this goes and try to, and this is what we did, Bob and I did, the direction of the board when we went to uh, the meeting, the school board meeting, was our concerns were better communications, more open, because if we're sitting here and we don't understand or we don't, you know, it's better if on, on big uh, discussion at your school board meetings that somebody, at least one of our representatives, be sent down here to speak on, you know, to the public on Cape TV at one of the select board meetings. Uh, or have some better communication between the town and the school board uh, on important issues. So well, school board meetings were all on li live streamed and recorded on YouTube, just like the town's meetings have been. Um, you know, when this all came, when this all started for me, I let the other board members, it had nothing to do with the Black Lives Matter flag or this, that, and the other thing. It had everything to do with when George, after the election, George decided he wanted to get off the board. That's when I started paying attention, well, in the past, we always appointed somebody to fill out a term. The select board did. We go to the public, <coughs> he wants to, and then we come and have people come in and say why they would like to, and that's how we did it. You know that. Mm -hmm. I did not know that in a budget bill two years ago, or maybe three years ago now, that this uh, came through, signed off by the legislature, that, oh no, the school board who they want to fill a seat, and then it will go to an election. Uh, the next following. election after. Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, that's gone back. I think, I don't know the full history of it because I haven't been involved. I mean, I've been involved, was involved in the schools for a long time, but not nearly as long as Ken Fredat and Doug mm -hmm. Earl and those, those folks, or Adrian. But I think it's gone back and forth a couple of times. It made more sense when each town had its own school board, and that's how the school board that's what I remember when I was on the Clarendon board is when there was a vacancy, the school board selected a member. Because I think we had to do that when, I know there were a couple of vacancies that came up and the school board itself chose the replacement. I can't remember who it was that resigned. I think maybe Shirley Brousseau resigned yeah, that and was we had to appoint somebody. And that same law that we knew <coughs> for two years. Right. And that's we didn't realize that. And then uh, when all this came about, uh, that's when we uh, became aware of the fact that... Yeah, well the change in law predated a lot of the mergers when these bigger districts were created. So it made a lot more sense when each town had its own school board. Right. Nobody, I think, thought to update it when these merged districts started appearing. And then it does get a little wonky having people from other towns deciding who's gonna represent you. And that's the issue. And But to yeah. take that out on the district, you're focusing on the wrong people. The district didn't do it. The legislature did it. So yeah, to exactly try and take it out on the district for something the legislature did isn't really fair. And that's exactly why we're going the route of 
uh, discussing with different legislators, not just Bart and Brian, House and Senate, but other uh, representatives from the, the area uh, we've been talking to about. You know, not only that, is to read the damn bill before you vote for it. But you understand, pulling out of that district wouldn't change that dynamic. If you pull oh, out of the district, this, whatever school board you end up on, and you will end up on some other more merged board, because they're not allowing standalone schools unless they're over a thousand or over nine hundred students. So the town would have ended up merged with somebody else somewhere eventually, and you'd be in the same circumstances. So again, taking it out on the the district school board isn't really fair because they had we had nothing to do with it. We didn't change the law, we didn't write the law, we didn't make the law. So saying that because of a law that was established by the legislature, you want to pull out of the unified district, that, that's not... Then is there school choice and stuff like that? There's always high school choice in the state of Vermont. Once yeah. your kid hits ninth grade, you can send them to any high school you want. You have to transport them or arrange transportation, but subject to certain there are certain restrictions and limitations that can be put on ins and outs at every school, and every school establishes those at the beginning of their year, or at a certain time of the year, I can't remember when. I think it's it's usually shortly after, it's around reorganization after town meeting that each school sets their limits for ins and outs. But the one other thing that merging the district did is it enabled people to more easily choose an elementary school for their child. So say somebody who lived on the southern side of Clarendon could decide, hey, Wallingford Elementary is closer, and I, that's where I grew up, so I want my kid to go there. Well, you could do that a lot easier after the merger than you could before it. So there were a lot of advantages to it. And there were some drawbacks, too, but um, there's a lot of protections in there, especially for our smaller schools. And we all firmly believe that smaller schools benefit kids. So we did it when we did it for that reason and for the reasons, all the reasons that were stated and everything that we mailed out. You having served on the school board, what is the uh, uh, school board as an organization? What is their compliance with the state for putting up notices and things like this? Is it the same as the town would Yeah. It's everybody, every public entity, which includes school boards, planning commissions, <coughs> and any subcommittee thereof, um, has to post agendas within a certain amount of time, post minutes with a certain amount of time. Um, all the open meeting laws, public records laws, all apply to school districts the same way they do to a uh, select board or planning commission or ZBA or whatever. And we initially were frustrated, say, let's use that term, uh, with what was going on, and we decided that, well, possibly we'd go to the voters to get a uh, non-binding article put on, just to ask our voters in town what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. After we said that at a meeting is when we started investigating even more, and that's when we got the confirmation that, as you had just stated uh, prior um, to the ongoing conversation we're having, uh, it's going to cause other towns to have to vote as well as this town, plus then the state has the final say. I think the state does actually, even if all of the towns vote yes, the state has a final say, but I can't imagine they would say no, but they would probably, I think, I, there have been a couple of districts that have either dissolved or had members fall out. I mean, I like Black River is the one that is the mo closest to us. They went their separate ways. Uh, well, the Black River High School, kind of that district dissolved, but those two towns were already part of a bigger district. Um, they're still in those districts, but now because the high school dissolved, they have choice as to where they send their kids from seven to 12. <coughs> But that was not a dissolution of the whole district. It was a dissolution of the Black River High School, which is a little weird. 
um, other places I don't know what's happened to those other towns but eventually somebody somewhere is going to put their foot on them and say you have to join another district that's what a, act 46 is still in effect what's not in effect is all the tax incentives that they were giving they started out at 10 cents for the first year and went down from that to try to urge more people to jump on early um, and I don't know what's happened to those districts where somebody has left but they would eventually end up getting merged with somebody else somewhere else and it would have to be a similar structure which is really weird there's so many nuances to this these laws 153 and 46 there are all these little requirements you know the district had to operate the same school so you couldn't have one town that did Rutland Town ran into this because they ran K through 8 out of a school and then they had high school choice they either had to change that or they had to merge with another district that had a similar structure like somebody else who did K through 8 which is almost non-existent and then a high school and then high school choice so they ended up having to alter how they did things that was one of the reasons Mill Middletown didn't want to join our district because then they would have been required to send kids to Mill River and they like their options a lot of Middletown kids go to Long Trail or go to Burn Burton. A lot of them that go to Mill River, but they didn't want to give up that choice. They had to find other school districts that operated basically the same way they did with an elementary school, but no uh, high school. So it, they don't make it easy to get in, and they don't easy make it easy to get out of these things. Any questions with John? Not at this point. Uh, I think you kind of answered it. Uh, it's one of the things that really upset me is when I found out when George resigned that we could not appoint our representative. It was going to be done by the school board. And as a taxpayer, I wanted to be part of the group that says who's going to be there, not people from some other town. That was one of my big issues, John. Yeah, it's understandable. My only point is I'm not disagreeing with you in any way, shape, or form. No, I know. I'm just saying that taking out your frustration on the school district wasn't yeah. the right way, right place to do it because the school district itself had nothing to do with it. Yeah, and maybe... But even if we had withdrawn, the situation wouldn't have changed. Maybe part of it, my ignorance of not understanding the law totally, but uh, I've learned an awful lot in the last <laughs> couple of months. Even the people that wrote it don't understand it. <laughs> Okay. Really, really, I mean, yeah. you put five people in a room with a law book and you come out with eight different opinions. Yeah. So it's it's not it's not surprising. I mean, we fortunately on our study committee we had a retired government lawyer who understood all who studied this and understood all of this stuff. And without Grant Reynolds, uh, it would have taken us a hell of a lot longer to get through it than we did. <laughs> so that's all I got, Mr. Chairman. No, sir. Hey, now I get to hop next door for a planning commission meeting. Well, that's right. At seven. <coughs> Do you want any of these? I think if you could just leave them right. with. Yep. Excerpts of it. If somebody wants the full text. text of it, the full file, I'll be happy to email it. I think if. Uh, we have a little folder that we're putting stuff in so that we at least can we need some history we can look in that folder instead of having to call up 16 mm -hmm. different lawyers yeah mm -hmm. all right thank well, you john good. thanks john thanks thanks john. all right thanks. 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 lighting you're good, you're good. Uh, so this is brought up again because you guys kind of didn't quite make a decision last meeting. Um, I sent out an email, what do you want me to tell VTrans, like your final answer, yes or no on lighting for the bridge. One of you guys said, I thought we tabled it. Another one said, I thought we made a decision. So here's your <laughs> final chance. I think we tabled it to explore the solar and which options we're gonna look at. They're saying the estimated cost to have it put in there is around thirty thousand dollars, and that's with a meter. Fun. 
I'm understanding it correctly, but we're paying light bill. You'll have to, yeah, you'll have to pay the monthly. Thirty thousand dollars to put power in that bridge to have lights. That's what it, that's what they're saying. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, it's and again, area. going back to our discussion from a couple meetings ago, if we say no, technically our bill should go down thirty thousand dollars because they built the they right. built the cost with that in it, right? right. So, but with that being said, the the matching on the town part was only like two and a half percent. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, much. it's not correct. Years has that bridge been like that without lights? In it? Why did we have that? forever? Not under, <laughs> since it was built, there's been a lot of cars too that were a lot poorer lighting than they have today. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I don't have an opinion which way you go, but just from that Zoom meeting, some people even mentioned holding a vote about whether lo lighting should go in or not. So I think it's kind of a hot button issue. But I don't. I don't care either way. I just wanted to let VTrans know soon. Well, there's one person I've been over that bridge, one person sitting on this board. Uh, no one <laughs> in town, but just because it was brought up, has said, well, we need lighting over there that I know of. That people that live over there. And I lived over there when I first moved here. And I used to go over that and at night you got headlights you go through. Yeah. You're not yeah. supposed to be doing fifty miles an hour going through that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. That so. is one of the issues there. I think people from down that hill win that bridge a little too quick. Yeah. And I don't for me it's not worth it. If the bridge was dark I think they would even slow down. They if the bridge is lit up I think they'd even go faster through it. Yeah. I, I don't see any reason. Make the motion. I'll make a motion for pass on the right. Second. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Officially killed it. There Done. you go. There you go. Done deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, chip and hook. Trees, I was down here when a couple came in and uh, passed us around up in the Chippen Hook Cemetery. There's some trees up there that it's not so much the tree issue, it's the root issue that's digging up the stone that are by there. So, Robert, we went and looked at this last fall, you and me and Heidi. They were complaining that the stuff that falls off the trees were landing on the stones and that. Well, it's like getting mossy because it's damp and. Um, I sent them those pictures and you guys made a decision last fall that you weren't going to do anything. Yeah. But they come every year and I guess years ago the select board had promised them that they would take them down. So. Oh, so years <laughs> ago, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> before my time. Before my time. <laughs> Long before me if it's years ago. But I don't been, recall it. But I've been here. For, here. Yeah. I've been here. For years now. <laughs> Gosh, years ago. I've been here too long. Um, <laughs> so I've been here this year nine years. Nine years, yeah. So it hasn't been in the last nine years because we did not do anything with these trees in nine years. So how old are you now? Except how old? How old am I? 33. Okay. <laughs> so what? you were only two years old when I came on a horse. <laughs> So is this a small part of the cemetery? It's it's the hem, it's the hemlocks. It's the, or the whatever they it's are. It's a spruce, aren't they? Spruce, spruce or whatever. Spruce. They are. It's it's looks spruce. like it's, right. it's, it's those two. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they're dying. That's the ones up in the, towards the center, right? Yeah, yeah. Kind of on that back side. Yeah. 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 I mean, the trees overall. I know they've been limbed up, but they're healthy trees by the looks of the pictures to me. I don't know. I mean, well, I was talking to the old maybe fellow. That that size, maybe that yeah. size light. I don't know. They, they, look like they were starting. they were complaining about the root system is getting into the graves. Yeah. Um. I mean, 
did they? If we want to start a cemetery list, we got a long list right. of things <laughs> that are going to be addressed yeah. down the road. So. See? Yeah. I don't know how before. Much it costs to take those down, but. Oh, cash could probably guess. Is that on the? What do you think? It, she said, what would, it, "What would it cost to take them down?" That. Two of them. Yeah, yeah the, the western two. side. The two on the right. Hardly any. What do you think? Six to eight hundred. Hmm? Six to eight hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> That's is that in a lot that's got perpetual care funds or not? Mm -hmm. How much do we have in here for me? Okay, look, look faster. <laughs> Don't throw anything. Both of those trees in, a, in their own that one lot. It's in yeah. From what my memory serves, when we we did look at it like a year ago, and it was I think they were in one lot for that's the most where, part. Where you had the kids up there painting and cleaning that. Steel oh, yeah. yeah, we did that. Yeah. It's behind so, there. So the yeah, issue, behind that back. The uh, issue is the roots, right? Sounds like the roots. That's what the old fellow But is, they were complaining about. This is going to be ongoing. The fact that they right. shed. Yeah. They were complaining about what the needles and stuff that they shed. Well, that's part of our maintenance for cleaning them up. And they said hmm. that it was the sh because the trees were causing too much shade, which. Those well, two right. those two trees are not no. the root issues of all the shade up there. No. So. I guess my question is, where does this end? Because if we start taking a few trees down, then you're going to lead into, well, I want my trees down, yeah. and yep. and you're going to be cutting them all down before you're done. Yep. Yeah, we're going to have burnt grass if we have dry summer. Well, no shade. You're going to have that <laughs> probably either way. Yeah. 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 Is that in the? Um, that's over. That's a, isn't that the landfill lot on that corner? I don't know whose it is, but that's the west, northwest kind Correct. of section. Yeah. Well, it's the it's the northwest. Yes. You, can, you can see where we just did the parking lot. Correct. So yeah. this this over here is is in the the what? really it's the southwest corner of that right end. of the big yeah. part of the cemetery. Yeah. Where that so-called ditch drainage that they wouldn't let us clean out. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I don't know. We can you just like limit a little, or? Well, it's already been. Li it looks to me like it's been limbed up ten yeah. feet. Well, if the roots are the problem. Just, yeah. They said that one of the issues is that she wants to come in and have it clean, but it gets mossy every single year, so she thinks the trees need to come down too. That was her, but him. He kept saying that yeah. the roots were going into the grave. Were they in today or when? Uh, I didn't think that some of the roots are going into the grave. That's my question. Well, because it's the chipmunks are filling holes all down by the roots or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Without, without not having it seen myself, I don't. If they, if they start well, they're not the, visible on the surface. The roots. I can see this. I, don't, I mean, I don't want to get bogged down on this for an hour. Right. I mean, what, 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 what do we think? I think we just need to pull. Is, is, are we in a favor of letting this happen and taking these down, or do you say leave them alone? I'd leave them alone. Mm -hmm. I'd say leave them alone uh, because if, if you start with one, you're going to have more and more. Yeah. Setting a precedent. You're going to set a with. precedent either way. If you, if you, if you go in at request and you start cutting trees, it's it's going to set a precedent where you're going to be doing this for everybody. Yeah. Especially in a non-perpetual. And then once you get down to Button Cemetery, wait more, wait more. Button Cemetery with all the cedar in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. The trees are three, four foot through. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Greg? Um, I wouldn't get involved in leave it natural. setting a precedence on that. There you go. You got your board opinion. The board has decided to leave them. Yep. Okay. I can let them know again. <laughs> I think that was the same decision as a year ago. Yeah. So I would suspect if they own that lot that they could do that on their own. I don't know. No, it's a town no because it's town managed. So I don't. I don't think Maybe not. they have to get town approval before they do anything. I think what we okay. might consider is maybe once a year looking at those headstones and if they are getting and would we'll have somebody clean the headstones instead of cutting the tree. You're setting another uh, get them to clean the headstones, Mike. Right? You want to be awful careful of that. I don't have anything to do. Yeah. <laughs> I, until you can't do it, then, it uh, then the rest of us will have to take up what you started. <laughs> Do we have a new volunteer for the cemetery committee? 
<laughs> what did I run my mouth? Yeah. <laughs> Someone want to make that a motion. <laughs> Second it. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one that calls the motion. <laughs> All right. Hey. Never mind. So I will contact them. Let them know that you discussed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. For now. All right. Next. <laughs> New business. Nine one one correction. Squire Road. Um, so I was contacted by Gail Squire in Tinmouth um, that Squire Road here in Clarendon is not spelled correctly on the maps. And that was due to a mistake back in 2016 where the state guy asked the admin for a correction on spelling and he asked if it was Square Road or Squire, like S-Q-U-I-R-E, and she replied Squire, S-Q-I-R-E. And it's supposed to be like the family name. For Squire, so Are he the said. Road it, signs all S Q U I R E R. One it, on one end is Squire, like, like yeah. One end is Squire, like the family name. One end is the so misspelled. They are, they are different. Oh, yeah. is that right? <laughs> I think that's why someone like noticed because they're different. I went to Unified District of Peter's School. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's an easy fix. You just have to say like, we'll switch it back to the Squire family. Mr. Chairman. Uh, make a motion that we authorize the administrative assistant to correct the issue of spelling on Squire Road. <laughs> Second. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any further comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I don't know if I want to. Make sure the road commissioner gets that That's another pretty job. quick so he gets that put up. <laughs> That's another Gets that taken care of. <laughs> please. <laughs> Uh, you got a lot done. <laughs> he doesn't have much to do right now, so I want to make sure he's got plenty to get done. Um, <laughs> did you get anything back from uh, when the going to start working on Walker Mountain Road? What's Black top. Oh, the paving? Paving. paving. No, not yet. No. I got to get a hold of them. And I meant to ask you that before, but sorry. Um, out of order. Approval of the FY. 22 tax rate. I don't think it looks good. <laughs> I'll ask for a motion on that. So non resident went up and homesteads went down just a touch? Almost two, two yep. cents. Almost two cents down. Homestead. Yep. Residents went up just under two. Yeah. Just over two. Yep. Yep. Two oh six. Oh, there, two and a half. Here. I didn't look at the difference on the side. I guess before we make a motion, does the treasurer have any comments? No, solicitors and I have gone over it. I've been totally sure it's what it's supposed to be based on what was voted in March. So I think it's going to be the first page that you have is what will be posted. Um, as the official tax rate with a due date of Saturday, October 16th. Mm -hmm. um, and then the second page is a side by side with last year's tax rates versus this year's tax rates and the difference between them. And the third sheet is a worksheet that shows um, everything that was voted on, basically how we how we got our um, The if you will. It is what it is. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the fiscal year 22 tax rate. Second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. That won't really do it. Not that we want to. Yeah. <laughs> aye. Executive session. Now, before we do that, do we want to have town officers report? Yeah, let's go right yeah. down. Yeah. Let's go right down through, and because we can't go to the other we side, go over tonight, there so we're gonna actually have to dismiss people. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, Nicely. Titus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, do you have anything? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. You did get a, a letter. Oh, um, the email that we talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I sent this out earlier. Um, 
I believe maybe Joyce Barbieri yeah. sent um, a letter in the mail about a possible school board member having a conflict of interest um, because of the Democratic Party that she is a director of. Right. So I'm not sure where you want to take that. I'm just suggesting that I was hoping we'd have a representative, one of our uh, appointed, elected officials representing the town come here tonight. And if that's not the case, um, does the board have any objections to us sending that to the school board? Not a bit. Go for it. Go ahead. All right. So let's uh, get that and then ask for an acknowledgement that they did in fact receive that. Please. Do you want it to all school board members or our representatives? Our representatives and the school board chair. Are you, I guess, I, and what you're, are you requesting a response? Are you requesting, what are you, what are you requesting no, out of acknowledgement that they received <coughs> it because I, I want yeah. the person that sent it to know that we did in fact send it. Here's yep. the acknowledgement that they did in fact get it in the story. And however they deal with it, they deal with it. Yeah. It's so, out of our jurisdiction. Correct. It is. Yep. As we found that's, out. That, I, that's why I, the big thing I was wondering what exactly we're looking for because it is out of our jurisdiction. There's yeah. not really yeah. anything we can do about it. So. But I don't want to have this. Oh, I never received it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. No, that's fair. And. Yes, you have any concerns? Again, condolences to the Ken Kennedy fin family. Right. And uh, Bob? Same with Cassius Sentiments. Mm -hmm. uh, you as well, I did stop up. I got her check. She did get it. Uh, they were up at the funeral home. Uh, but I called just before I came down here just to check. And they did receive it. She did. Uh, so. Do you have anything? No, just same thing. I, you know, Tim served the town for many, many years, oh, wow. and so definitely uh, condolences on all of our behalf. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rick, you like it? Um, same across the board. Uh, the only thing, um, if we're going to have, um, if they're going to have some type of hours or something, if. Are we going to need to do something special if all five of us go up there? Or well, you know no. what I'm saying? No, no, we're just no. citizens of the town. Yeah, paying respect. yeah. No, that's where we can we can do that. that yeah. I just want to make sure that we didn't mess up somebody's no. interpretation of the open meeting law. That yeah. happened when Art Knox passed away. Correct. Okay. Yep. A lot of us were up there at the same time. Yep. Not a meeting. And um, to that point, when what I found out at the school meeting was that yes we could go the whole board could go to a meeting right. as long as we are not making any decisions at that point. of course we are another function at somebody else's town meeting got it so just making sure that's all mr chairman i'll make a motion that we enter into executive session to discuss personnel Second. Any more <laughs> all in favor please say aye aye thanks for coming folks we want to pose and thank you all right, well, uh, we got an interesting uh, executive session. Um, I think uh, we, we want to go ahead and report what the executive session uh, was built around. Mm -hmm. So um, we discussed a few different personnel issues um, that uh, are ongoing and uh, as coming out of it, we'll publicly remind Cash that tomorrow he's to remind our employees, uh, particularly on the road crew, that they're signed acknowledgments of the updated town policy, which was done now, I think, three meetings ago for us, yep. um, that those acknowledgments are due by Friday from the road personnel. Um, so that was part of what was stemmed around, and the rest of it is a uh, confidential employee things that were discussed. Right. Yep. Does anybody have anything else? And entertain a motion. So moved. 
Who seconded it? I'll second it. Okay. Somebody did down there. <laughs> Cash and I seconded. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Good. Good night.